Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into rainy and windy Milford High School as Milford TV is happy to present coverage of Scarlet Hawks football. Tim Coet here on the call, and Milford finally back at home after starting the first three weeks of this 2015 season on the road. It turned out to be a one and two road trip for the Scarlet Hawks, an exciting Victory in the final seconds, courtesy of a field goal from freshman Sean Lahane in game number one against Marlboro, and then tough luck losses again in the final seconds against Franklin, and then most recently last week in overtime against Canton. So Milford will look to get right back up to the 500 mark as they open up the home portion of their schedule here tonight against the winless Oliver Ames Tigers. A tough start to the season for the Tigers, and it certainly will get no easier facing a very tough Milford offense one of the top offenses in the Hockamock League this season. That will be put to the test here tonight. Rainy, windy conditions. We'll see if Zach Lanzetta and the passing game is up to the challenge. A good one on tap next. It is Milford taking on Oliver Ames. We will have the opening kick when we return. Coverage of Milford High School Athletics on Milford TV. Welcome back to Milford High School, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Coet here on the coverage for Milford TV here in the home opener for the Milford Scarlet Hawks football team, a special presentation before the game, recognizing a member of the community, Dennis Breen. His daughter's now out on the field for a ceremonial coin toss. Coach Breen, he was a long-time physical education teacher, football coach, a legendary football coach, I should say. Um, track coach, uh, became an assistant principal, went to Hopedale, was the high school principal there, and ultimately the superintendent of schools. So what we're going to do tonight is Coach John Dagnes, who I uh, spent many years coaching with, with Mr. Green, he's going to say a few words and, and give us a, a rundown of Coach Green and, and uh, why we're honoring him tonight. Uh, after that, we're going to do a moment of silence, and then we're going to... Uh, Shannon and Samantha Breen are going to come out and do a do the coin toss with the officials. Uh, an honorary coin toss. Um, you know, on a personal note, I, I always I have the stage. I, I kind of have to take it. So I, uh, you know, I played for Coach Breen, both football and track. And you know, you never realize how much somebody impacted your life until they're gone. And when Coach Breen passed away, you know, I, I looked through my old scrapbook that I had never once looked at. And, you know, I, I sat in my office and I was just crying. I, I realized, you know, the impact that he had to help shape me as a human being was unbelievable. And I, you know, looking at the people in my life, there aren't that many people that have that much impact. And as I spoke to my classmates and kids from other classes, you know, I heard similar stories. And, and I realized that, you know, a lot of people measure success by money and things like that. But, but that has nothing to do with it. Uh, you know, success is how many lives you shape. And Coach Breen was a successful man and deserves us to honor him. So with that, I give you Coach Dagnes. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I would first like to start by thanking the uh, Gridiron Club, uh, the football team, and Coach Todd uh, for taking the initiative to recognize uh, Dennis Breen. The players will be wearing uh, Dennis's initials on their helmets. Um, I was a friend and colleague of Dennis for almost 40 years. And I can say without hesitation that I have never met a finer human being. Dennis's was a role model for everybody he came in contact with as a teacher, as a coach, as a principal, as a superintendent, and most importantly, as a father to his beautiful daughters, Samantha, Shannon, and Carolyn. Dennis coached for 26 years. 20 of those as head coach of the football team. In those 20 years, Dennis only had three losing seasons. His record of 126 
67 and 3, as well as three Super Bowl championships, I'm sure will never be equaled again. I know that Dennis would love being here and watching this year's teams because so many of the names are familiar. Names like Lanzetta, Mobilia, Brajoli, DeSantis, all sons of fathers that Dennis and I had the pleasure to coach. On behalf of myself, his wife Kelly, his daughters Samantha, Shannon, and Carolyn, I would like to thank you for this fitting tribute. At this time, I would ask you to join me in a moment of silence to honor the memory of Coach Dennis Breen. Thank you. At this time, we would like to present Dennis's daughter, Samantha, and his daughter, Shannon, who will go out for the coin toss and be given a bouquet of flowers. Thank you very much. And a nice tribute to a member of this greater Milford community prior to the start of this game tonight. Again, Milford taking on Oliver Ames. So that coin toss going on out on the field right now. This game should be getting underway in just another couple of minutes. The conditions certainly no better now than they were when we were on air with our introduction. It is going to be rough out there from start to finish. Very cold, very raw. It's been raining for much of the last three days. And that is going to continue straight through the weekend. So it is going to be tough conditions, especially for the passing offenses for both of these teams. We'll see how each of them adapt. Points have been at a bit of a premium for Oliver Ames through the early stages of the season. That included a shutout loss at home on their first game of the season. But both sides out there right now, their captains at midfield as the coin toss is about to get underway. And a big contingent out there as Principal Banach, I believe, Dr. Trembley also out there. So ground rules being gone over right now as we get set for this home opener. It has been much anticipated for the Scarlet Hawks fans to be able to take in their home team here at their home field after three tough road games, all winnable games for the Scarlet Hawks, unfortunately. Last-minute heroics by their opponents, both Franklin and Canton. A game-winning field goal for Franklin. A game-winning touchdown in overtime for the Canton Bulldogs. And so it appears that Oliver Ames has won the coin toss. They have elected to defer to the second half. So Milford will get the ball to open this game. The first half has been productive for Milford offensively. It has been their best half through their first three games. It has been much more of a struggle in the second half, but nonetheless, it will be good to set the tone, have a chance to get the offense out there first. So the pregame festivities coming to an end. Both of these teams look ready to go. We will have the national anthem and be back with the opening kick next here on Milford TV. <laughs> Very nice job from the Milford High School Marching Band providing the national anthem for tonight's home opener. Oliver Ames already out there on the field with the ball on the tee. The Milford special teams going over a few final notes with head coach Joe Todd. The last time we had a chance to see the Scarlet Hawks here on their home field was in 
preseason scrimmage action against Taunton. A scrimmage game that Milford won. Much different conditions now. It was a warm and sunny late summer afternoon for that scrimmage, but fall has officially arrived here in Milford with this weather here tonight. Again, just very soggy conditions, but a lot of hardy fans have made the trip out here to the Milford High School football field. As the fans for this Milford team have shown up in great numbers really throughout the early stages of this season in total. And now the Scarlet Hawks out there on the field. So just seconds away from this game getting underway. Again, Tim Coet on the call for this coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics on Milford TV. The kicker for the Oliver Ames Tigers set to go. The kick in the air, a good deep kick. This is going to sail out to about the 12-yard line, reeled in there by the Scarlet Hawks. A big, hard hit by Blake Hill, who received the kick. He's able to burst his way forward past the 25-yard line up to about the 27. So the offense set to take the field now. Zach Lanzetta, a 57% completion percentage through the first three games of the season. He has thrown for five touchdown passes. He's thrown just one interception. He's thrown for a total of 632 yards through the first three games. So this passing offense has been high flying. A couple of very big passing plays, especially in the closing seconds of the game last week to give Milford a chance to reach overtime, but they will keep it on the ground on first down as the handoff goes to DeSantis. He is able to turn the corner on the near side. He's able to cross the 35-yard line, pushed out of bounds right around the 38. Back towards the 37, the nose of the football just prior to that 37-yard line. It will set up second down and two. Opening minute of this home opener. Another handoff, a bit of a bobble that time for the Scarlet Hawks. Now the ball loose, and Milford is able to fall on it. The carry for Chappelle Feaster, but the ball on the ground. Fortunately, one of the offensive linemen for the Scarlet Hawks able to fall on it. It looked like it was Riley Burns who was able to come up with it. And that will set up a third down and short, third down and one from the Milford 37-yard line. And now instead they will come out and make a measurement just to be sure. So this will be a third and very short coming up for Milford. So it will end up being third down and inches literally just an inch or two shy of the first down. So we'll see if Milford will keep it in the hands of Zach Lanzetta, who has run the ball a little bit in these first three games of the season. He does actually have a rushing touchdown. Back to the line goes Lanzetta under center. He will hold on to it himself. He pushes forward, and he has plenty for the first down as the ball crosses the Milford 40-yard line, and that will give the Scarlet Hawks a fresh set of downs. It's been a bit of a feast or famine running game for the Scarlet Hawks through the first three weeks of the season. Looking back to what they were able to do last week against Canton, Kept under 50 yards rushing total. Blake Hill was able to accumulate 42 yards of rushing. As now he will reel in this short pass attempt completed from Lanzetta. Hill still on his feet deep inside Oliver Ames territory. He spills across the 30 yard line down towards the 26 before he's finally brought down. And you have to imagine Blake Hill is going to play a tremendous role in this game tonight as he has done all season long. But a tough man to bring down made even tougher with these wet and slippery conditions. A huge play. The fifth play of this drive for the Scarlet Hawks, and it's a big gain on the ground for Hill. 
timeout now with nine minutes and 35 seconds to go. So a short pass for Lanzetta, but the tough yards after for Blake Hill. Have the Scarlet Hawks offense in business. The crowd still subdued right now, partially due to the weather, but an early touchdown will certainly spring this crowd to life. We will step aside briefly. Again, 9.35 to go in the opening quarter. The Scarlet Hawks driving, looking for the first points of the game. Coverage of Milford High School Athletics here on Milford TV. Back to action after the timeout. First and 10 for the Scarlet Hawks on the Oliver Ames 27 yard line. Lanzetta out of the shotgun, a quick shuffle to Blake Hill. He's able to elude initial contact in the, ba in the backfield. He ends up collecting a few positive yards on the play. It looked like Oliver Ames may have Hill bottled up in the backfield, but again, that big body able to at least make something out of the play. He brings the ball up ahead to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Milford hurrying back to the line. Again, Lanzetta out of the shotgun, back to each side. And it is a handoff. This one goes to the near side and a hard takedown, the tackle by number 33, Kiss, uh, Chris Hannigan. Look to be Feaster on the carry that time, so Milford looking to get Feaster involved early on in the running game along with Blake Hill. Eight minutes and 29 seconds to go in this first quarter. It will be a third down and eight coming up for the Scarlet Hawks. They're one for one so far on third downs. This is the eighth play of the opening drive coming up for Milford. And Milford taking a quick time out here. The clock stopped at 8.14. So just one passing play attempted for Zach Lanzetta so far in this game last week against Canton. 10 completions for Lanzetta, 21 attempts for 245 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. He did throw that 63-yard touchdown bomb to Leo Maranta in the closing seconds to tie it. Lanzetta out of the gun here, a high snap. He's able to pull it down. The quick throw to the near side for Blake Hill, continuing to spin forward. And it's going to be very close to first down yardage. It's not going to quite do it. It will be fourth down and short for the Scarlet Hawks. The ball spotted on the Oliver Ames 19 yard line as Lanzetta gets the play from the sidelines. And now the Hawks take the line. DeSantis in the backfield to Lanzetta's left. Hesitation now, he takes the snap, looking to throw, looking for the end zone. He has Blake Hill, who has the catch for the touchdown. A 19-yard touchdown pass from Lanzetta to Hill. And Milford is able to strike first. Blake Hill with his sixth touchdown overall on the season. It is his fourth receiving touchdown of 2015, which leads the team. And the point after attempt from the freshman, Sean Lahane is good. Seven minutes and 16 seconds to go in this first quarter. The Scarlet Hawks get things started on the right foot. A seven to nothing lead over Oliver Ames. More action coming up next here on Milford TV. Back inside Milford High School, the 19-yard touchdown reception for the junior Blake Hill has given the Scarlet Hawks the early lead. Now Lahane to kick it off, reeled in by Oliver Ames right around the 15-yard line and quickly brought down just outside the 25-yard line. 
Hard contact from the special teams unit. We've seen some big plays in the return game allowed by the Milford special teams through the first three weeks. Of course, the very first play of 2015 was a touchdown, a kick returned for a touchdown by the Marlboro Panthers. We also saw a big 70-yard kickoff return for Canton just before halftime last week that led to a touchdown that really flipped momentum in that game. Now Oliver Ames out there. It will be the quarterback who will keep it himself on first down. Running right into the pile. Not much gained there on first down. It looks like about two yards. As the clock continues to run, head coach Joe Todd certainly pleased with his offensive effort on that first series, but keeping the defense now engaged as they take on an Oliver Ames offensive attack that is looking to break out. Again, one of the lower scoring offenses. They've just scored 30 total points so far through their first three games, all losses. Charlie Ryan, the quarterback, looking to throw straight up the middle, and that is reeled in. And it looks like that's going to be good for the first down. Just shy of the 40-yard line. Connor Maroney, who is one of the featured offensive weapons in this Tigers offense, making his first catch of the game. First and 10 now from the Oliver Ames 39 as we are just under six minutes to play in this first quarter. From the shotgun, the handoff. A missed tackle initially from Blake Hill, but the back only able to get as far as the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Look to be Aiden Conley with that very short run. Second down and nine. The ball just a little bit beyond the Oliver Ames 40 yard line as the Tigers huddle up. And set to go now once again, Ryan. The give straight up the middle. Ezra Coyne on the carry, but again, not much there. It looks like no gain on the play. It will set up third down. And now they'll give him a yard to set up third down and eight. As the clock continues to roll, four minutes and 39 seconds to go in this first quarter action as the defense looks to put an end to this Oliver Ames drive right here. Again, Charlie Ryan looking at the plays on the sleeve. Takes a snap, a low snap. He fakes the handoff, rolls out. Now he's going to run with it. The late throw, and it has broken up. Alex Salamone was able to swat that ball away. There is a penalty. It looked like he may have been past the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. It did seem as though he had run a good ways. So it will be fourth down coming up now for the Oliver Ames Tigers. Fourth down and eight. And so a likely punting situation coming up here for the Tigers. A little bit of a mental mistake there for the quarterback, Ryan. Losing track of where he was on the field. So the special teams units coming out on the field once again as the defense able to do their job on this opening drive for the Tigers. The 
A bad snap and it gets through the hands of the punter. Trying for a desperation punt, he is able to get it away. And a nice roll for Oliver Ames. It continues to go past the 30-yard line all the way down to the 29th. So how about that near disaster for Oliver Ames? It was a low snap. It rolled to the punter, went through his hands, back about 10 or 15 yards, and he was able to keep his cool and get that kick away. And not bad of a kick, considering he was in danger. So all things considered, Oliver Ames will take it as the Scarlet Hawks will start their second possession of the game from right around their own 30-yard line. So a five-play drive for the Tigers that results in a punt, an adventurous one, but it ends up working out okay for the visitors. Lanzetta and the Scarlet Hawks offense back out on the field as this crowd Tries to get energized. They'll hand it off to DeSantis on first down. He spins right through tackles up close to the 40-yard line. That's a good gain for DeSantis. About nine yards on the carry. And now they do signal first down. So 10 yards on the ground for DeSantis. Moves the Scarlet Hawks up to the 40. Three minutes and 31 seconds to go in this first quarter. Again, Lanzetta flanked by running backs on each side. He fakes the handoff to DeSantis, rolls out, gets the pass completed to Moranta. Moranta has the first down, still on his feet inside Oliver Ames territory. Forced out of bounds at the OA 40. So 20 yards on that dump off pass from Lanzetta to Maranta. And Milford moving the ball well on their first two plays of their second drive. Once again inside OA territory, now they spot the ball at the Tigers 41. Blake Hill out wide to the near side. It is a handoff straight up the middle, slicing through again for a good gain on first down is DeSantis. So DeSantis, another good run on first down, setting up second down and short, second down and two yards to go as we dip underneath three minutes to play. Another quick snap, the handoff again straight up the middle. This will be good for a Scarlet Hawks first down as DeSantis getting three carries so far on this drive, all of them resulting in good plus plays. And so that pushes the Hawks all the way down to the OA 26. As the clock continues to roll, it's been a fairly fast moving first quarter of play, a seven to nothing lead for the Scarlet Hawks. Looking for more on the move. Lanzetta as usual, a lot of the shotgun. And the give goes towards the near side. It's DeSantis again who gets tangled up. Chris Hannigan in the backfield to take DeSantis down. So that's a loss of about three yards for DeSantis. Can make it a loss of four, second down and 14 coming up from back on the OA 30. It's like a little miscommunication in the backfield as well as DeSantis was partially shielded by his own teammate. So second down and long. DeSantis in the backfield again. A high snap, he gets the carry. Looking for a block out in front, he's able to tumble forward across the 25 yard line. So it will set up a third down and manageable situation now for the Scarlet Hawks offense. As we are continuing to tick down under 90 seconds to play in the first quarter. Trying to keep this offense up tempo is Lanzetta. 
He takes the snap, he fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, still going. He pulls the ball down, he's going to run with it himself. The shoestring tackle made. Looked like Jay Frucci, who was able to get a hold of the lower leg of Lanzetta. He held on to make the tackle, shy of first down yardage. And well shy of first down yardage. It's going to be a fourth down and six yards to go as we continue to roll now coming down to 30 seconds to play in the quarter. And the offense staying out on the field here for fourth down. This could be the final play of this first quarter. Lanzetta is ready. He takes the snap, another high one, looking to throw, has some time, looking for the near sideline, and he had a wide open Leo Maranta, but the ball bounces out of his hands, and it will be a turnover on downs. And that is where the weather conditions come into play. Maranta, an easy grab, but with the slick football, it slides right through the fingers, and that will allow Oliver Ames to take over. So what started out as a very promising drive for Milford Stalls, And so Oliver Ames will take over from their own 24. And it was certainly the right call for Coach Todd. The kicking game, no doubt, will be very dicey with these conditions. And really, even with the turnover on downs, you essentially get a punt out of it with the Oliver Ames offense starting from their own 24. They keep it on the ground on first down, and they're not able to gain anything. And that will, do it. And that will indeed be the final play of the first quarter. So just one score in the first 11 minutes of play. It was the touchdown reception for Blake Hill. His sixth touchdown reeled in on the year, and it gives Milford a 7 to nothing lead. The teams will flip the field. We will be back with the start of the second quarter when we come back next here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics on Milford TV. Back for the start of the second quarter. Milford High School, the Scarlet Hawks taking on the Oliver Ames Tigers, the two teams that are currently in the basement of the Davenport standings. Milford in fifth place, Oliver Ames in sixth, as it is second down and 10 for Oliver Ames. The toss up the middle, and again, very little gained on the ground for the Tigers, about a yard of positive offense. Third down and eight, they'll give the back two yards on that carry. Opening minute of the second quarter. Charlie Ryan and this Oliver Ames offense trying to gain some traction in these slippery conditions. Ryan under center, third down and eight. He fakes the toss and is immediately wrapped up by the defensive line of the Scarlet Hawks. In on the tackle, number 62 for the Hawks, that is Patrick Brajoli. So no gain, fourth down and eight, and another punt coming up. Remember, this was a dicey situation for the Tigers the last time around. Here is the snap, it's able to get to the punter on a line, the punt away, a wobbly kick, it takes a bounce just past midfield and will roll to a stop right around the Milford 46 yard line. As the fans stay in good spirits here in Milford, despite the soggy conditions, they like what they've seen so far. Their team up seven to nothing. The offense has been able to move the ball fairly well on their first two possessions of this game. Unfortunately, the last drive resulting in no points, but the offensive unit about to take the field once again with nine minutes and 26 seconds to go until halftime. 
Milford has led at halftime in each of their past two games. Interesting enough, the only game they led at halftime or trailed at halftime was the game that they won against Marlboro in the closing seconds. Meanwhile, on first down, it is big number 42, Blake Hill once again, who was able to force his way up the middle for the instant first down for the Hawks. And right now the Scarlet Hawks having great success running right up the gut of this Oliver Ames defense. Right back to the line, they hand it off to Hill again, who escapes a couple of tackles, gets down towards the OA 30 before he's finally dragged down by a swarm of defenders. And we've talked about it at times this season, Blake Hill, almost a Rob Gronkowski-like factor out there on the field, just such great size and strength that takes at least a couple of defenders to finally be able to take him down, especially once he has a good head of steam. A timeout taken on the field here with nine minutes and seven seconds to go. It remains a seven to nothing lead for the Scarlet Hawks. They have the ball deep inside Oliver Ames territory. We'll see what they can do next here on Milford TV. Back out of the timeout, first and 10 for the Scarlet Hawks from the Oliver Ames 31. As Milford is able to get a little something on the ground on first down, courtesy of Jack DeSantis. It'll be about a two yard gain that time for DeSantis. Great shots from field level, courtesy of our cameraman, Malcolm Zale. Joey Marcello doing the camera work up on top of the press box. Rob O'Keefe, our technical director for the game today. We have a full crew here. Coverage of Scarlet Hawks athletics on Milford TV. Second down and long for the Hawks. They run straight into the pile and virtually no gain there. In fact, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a loss for the Hawks. So after forcing their way deep inside Oliver Ames territory, all of a sudden now, the Hawks facing a third down and 10, so a big loss on that last running play. The line of scrimmage, the Oliver Ames 30-yard line as we hit the eight-minute mark here in the second quarter. Blake Hill breaks the huddle, sets up out wide to the near side. DeSantis in the backfield to Lanzetta's left. Lanzetta looking to throw, he drops back, looking for Blake Hill, he's able to pull it in, and he is all alone into the end zone for a touchdown. A 30-yard touchdown catch for Blake Hill, his second of the night. And Milford is able to go up 13-0 with the point after coming up. And despite those... Watery conditions out there. Blake Hill able to stick the hands out, make that catch far away from his body, hold on. And he had no problem getting into the end zone. Here's the point after from Lehane. And it is good. Seven minutes and 36 seconds to go. And Milford is able to up the lead to 14 to nothing over Oliver Ames here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics on Milford TV. Blake Hill virtually unstoppable for the Scarlet Hawks here in this first half. He has a pair of receiving touchdowns, 19 yards and 30 yards on that last one as this kickoff, a hard line drive that slips through the return man and will end up in the end zone for a touchback. That was through the fingers of Liston Funai. And so Oliver Ames will start from their own 20-yard line, their third offensive possession of the night. Their first two have resulted in punts. Seven minutes and 31 seconds to go in the half as Ryan once again leads the offense out on the field. The handoff on first down, dragged down from behind. A great read from the Hawks defense. That was Funai again for Oliver Ames on the carry, a gain of nothing. As the rain continues to fall at a steady clip outside on the field, the umbrella's out in full force in the stands, but 
Right now, the Scarlet Hawks offense has been able to weather the storm quite nicely to the tune of a pair of touchdowns through this first half, down to six minutes and 50 seconds to go. Second down and 10. Ryan will keep it himself. He cannot break free, and now help arrives for the Scarlet Hawks. In from the secondary came Connor Corbett to make sure Ryan didn't break free. Third down and 10 now. A gain of a couple of inches on that play from the quarterback. The most points Olive Rames has scored in a game so far this season is 15. That is the total points they have walked away with in their previous two games. Also shut out in week one, so already down a pair of scores. This has been a very anemic offense, and the pressure on now already down by 14. Five minutes and 50 seconds to go in the half as the whistle stops this play before it begins. And a timeout taken on the field with five minutes and 48 seconds to go until we reach halftime. 14 to nothing the score, the Scarlet Hawks with the lead. Coverage of Milford High School Athletics on Milford TV. The line of scrimmage continues to be the 20-yard line of the Oliver Ames Tigers. They have not been able to move the football at all. Ryan. Out of the shotgun, rolling out, trying to find some space. He throws, looking for number 10, Brandon Belton. But incomplete, that one down around the feet of the receiver. And it will be fourth down and 10 coming up and an, another punting situation for these Tigers. The punter all the way back at his own five-yard line. And a good snap, and it's blocked by the Scarlet Hawks. Mobilia was able to get a hand on it. Now it comes to a stop. And so big-time trouble now for Oliver Ames as that ball came to a stop right around the Oliver Ames 12. And that looked like Mobilia, who was able to get the hand on it. Great to see Tony Mobilia back out on the field after suffering a knee injury in week two against Franklin. But back out there, a nice athletic play on special teams. And this sets up Milford inside the red zone as their offense comes back out on the field for their fourth possession of this first half. The official line of scrimmage, the Oliver Ames 13. Blake Hill out wide to the far side. The handoff goes to DeSantis, and he is not able to escape that defensive front of the Tigers. Looked to be maybe Philip Saba who was able to get the tackle for Oliver Ames. About to reach the five minute mark now in this first half action. Second down and 10 for Milford. No gain on the carry from DeSantis. A high snap pulled down nicely by Lanzetta. He gets the pass away, completed to Maranta, and he is across the goal line for the touchdown. 13 yards on the TD grab for Maranta, who gets into the offensive action. And Milford now with a 20 to nothing lead with another Lahane point after attempt coming up. Leonardo Maranta, who had a very big day last week against the Canton Bulldogs. Just three receptions for Maranta last week, but it was for 126 yards and a touchdown. 
as the point after from Lahane is good. Four minutes and 49 seconds to go in the half. It has been all Milford through this opening period of play, 21 to nothing. More to come next here on Milford TV. The Scarlet Hawks had scored a total of 41 first half points through their first three weeks of the season. They have added 21 points in the first half of week four here against Oliver Ames, a 21 to nothing lead as they get set to kick the ball away with four minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the second quarter. The rain continuing to fall, but not putting a damper on this Scarlet Hawks offense as again the ball is bobbled right around the 10 yard line. And now it's Mobilia again who is able to wrap up the return man. Now late flags come pouring in as the return man was able to stay on his feet despite getting wrapped up by Mobilia. It was Funai on the return for the Tigers. And so it's a face mask penalty against the Scarlet Hawks. There was a lot of contact once reinforcements arrived on special teams for the Scarlet Hawks. So that is the first penalty on Milford in this first half. So this will allow Oliver Ames to start this drive out past the 35 out to the 36 where it will be first and 10 looking to capitalize on a little bit better field position Ryan out of the shotgun he hands it off straight back up the middle and past the 40 yard line to about the 41 can make it the 42 And again, it looked to be Funai on the carry. Four minutes and 15 seconds left on this first half clock. Oliver Ames did win the coin toss to start this game and elected to defer to the second half. So they will open up the second half with possession, but they would like to try to head into halftime with some sort of momentum. They have a second down and four coming up here as Ryan hands it off. And the back gets it to about the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Once again, Liston Funai. Liston Funai for Oliver Ames, one of the smallest bodies out there on the field, but that might be exactly what you need in a game like this where it's hard to bring the running back down with these damp conditions. It'll be third down and short, third down and three yards to go from the OA 43-yard line. The Hawks looking for another stop. And it'll be a backwards pass completed to Funai, the running back looking to break free. He has the first down, still on his feet at midfield, and finally forced out just inside Milford territory. So good yards after contact for Funai. It looked like initially he might be bottled up prior to the first down. He was able to break free and continue forward all the way to the Scarlet Hawks 49-yard line. So... Inside enemy territory goes Oliver Ames. The clock stopped right now at 2.55 to go. Still plenty of time for a late score for the Tigers. As this time Ryan will look to throw, trying to get it out to the far sideline. No receivers in the area. Trying to buy some time, but Ultimately just threw that ball away, did Charlie Ryan. It'll set up second down and 10. Good pressure applied by this front seven of the Scarlet Hawks. Two forty-eight left to go. Ryan line up in the gun. 
Ryan takes the snap, the handoff to Funai. He's able to get back to the line of scrimmage before he is forced down. Might even be a bit of a loss for Liston Funai as the ball will be placed right back at the 50-yard line. So a loss of a yard will set up third down and 11 as the clock continues to tick down closer to halftime. A short timeout on the field, stopping the clock with two minutes and 17 seconds to go. This is some of the hardest work we've seen out of the Oliver Ames offense so far. The fans still very much in this game, pumped and excited to see three touchdowns from their Scarlet Hawks offense so far in this first half. Meanwhile, back to action on the field where Oliver Ames faces a third down and 11. Charlie Ryan looking to throw, rolls out to his right, looking deep down the field and overthrows the intended target, looking for Nick Zioli, but well overthrown. And it will be fourth down coming up once again for the Tigers. So two minutes and 10 seconds to go now after the incomplete. And once again, the punting unit out there on the field. And so for the fourth time, the Scarlet Hawks defense forcing an Oliver Ames punt. A bit of a short punt here, fair caught. Fair caught by Jack DeSantis, who then took off with it afterwards. Clearly signaled fair catch at the 30. But meanwhile, they have a flag down over on the far sideline. And so this penalty going against Milford. So it'll be a five yard penalty for Milford. A delay of game penalty. 2.01 on the clock. That is more than enough time for this offense judging by what they've been able to do so far on the night. Lanzetta takes the snap, looks to pass on first down, shuffles it up the middle, complete to DeSantis, who continues to race forward all the way towards the 45. That's a gain of close to 20 yards for DeSantis. A quick check down for Lanzetta to DeSantis, and it turns into 20 yards. And now a flag down, multiple flags down. As Maranta is on the carry. And this will be a holding penalty against Milford. So another five yard penalty for the Scarlet Hawks with one minute and 45 seconds to go. 10-yard penalty, check that. So it will be first down and 20. The line of scrimmage now, the Milford 35 as Lanzetta takes the snap. Another quick pass completed, and that is Blake Hill now reverses field. Still trying to shake tackles as he gets up around midfield. Ends up just across the 50-yard line. That initial catch was made all the way on the far sidelines. Hill able to reverse field, then tried to shoot up the middle. But he ends up forcing his way inside Oliver Ames territory. And we heard the coaches prior to the start of this game for Oliver Ames say, 
Make sure you know where 42 is at all times. Well, no doubt they've known where he is at all times, but it's been a different story trying to bring him down to the turf. So second down now for the Hawks. Another pass attempt. This one is completed. Jack Capaletti able to make the grab. The junior wide receiver helps Milford gain another first down as we are under 90 seconds to play in the first half. The clock still rolling as the Hawks hustle back up to the line. Hill out wide to the far side. The handoff goes to DeSantis. He has the first down. He stretches across to the 20-yard line. But another flag down on the field. And it is a holding penalty. And this is going to go against the Scarlet Hawks once again. So after playing penalty free through much of this first half, we've seen three penalties now over the last about two minutes for the Scarlet Hawks. And this will negate a big gain for Jack DeSantis. This pushes Milford all the way back to the 44-yard line. Nesta in motion now moves out wide to the far side. Lanzetta drops back. He dumps it off again to DeSantis, who's able to get back the penalty yardage as he gets just inside the 40 yard line, but that's going to set up a second down and long. And so they pick up the flag. There had been another flag down on that last play, but no penalty. They want to put 46 seconds now on the game clock. It had ticked down to 41.4. So under a minute to go as it will be second down and about nine yards to go. Penalties really hampering Milford here as they look to really bury the Oliver Ames Tigers looking for a fourth touchdown in this first half. The line of scrimmage now is the Oliver Ames 40 yard line. As now they're trying to communicate up to the booth, they do want 46 seconds on the clock, trying to get that squared away. So a bit of a delay in the action here. Again, we've seen three touchdowns so far in this first half for Milford, two of them courtesy of Blake Hill, one by Leonardo Maranta, all of them passing touchdowns. So despite these rainy conditions, Milford has still found a way to get it done in the passing game. And finally now they're able to get the game clock squared away. The wind starts to whip from left to right across the field as this ball is nearly intercepted. Thrown right into the midsection of Chris Hannigan, but he wasn't able to hold on. And Lanzetta is very lucky that that ball fell incomplete. So 40.4 seconds to go, and it will now be third down and long. It's a good drive that has turned ugly over this last two or three play stretch for the Scarlet Hawks. The ball remains on the 40-yard line. Just an ill-advised throw that time for Lanzetta. Nobody in the vicinity except Oliver Ames defenders. So they'll empty out the backfield. Lanzetta out of the shotgun. Another high snap handled cleanly by Lanzetta. He guns it in complete to Capaletti. He has the first down as he comes to a stop right around the 25 yard line. So Capaletti going across the middle. And this drive stays alive for the Scarlet Hawks with just over 30 seconds to go. The ball spotted on the 26. 
And you got to keep your eye on where number 42 positions himself on this next play. As Lanzetta verifies the next play with head coach Joe Todd. So it's been a tough opening period of play for this Tigers defense. They have spent a long time out on the field. As Lanzetta now relays the play to the huddle. The team taking their time here. Now they return to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 for the Hawks. They fake the handoff to DeSantis. Now the throw straight up the middle and a little bit underthrown looking for Blake Hill. Also had Maranta in the area, but the pass falls incomplete. Second and 10 with 28 seconds left. And we'll see if Lanzetta takes a shot at the end zone coming up here. If he can get some time in the pocket. Again from the 26. Again play action. Lanzetta in trouble. He's able to avoid the sack. He gets some yardage, but he's eventually brought down. The clock still running. Down to 16 seconds left, but only about four yards gained on the play for Lanzetta. And so a final timeout taken by the Scarlet Hawks with 16.1 seconds to go. It will be third down and 10 for the Hawks. Can they punch one more score in here before the half? We will find out next coverage of Scarlet Hawks football on Milford TV. Down to the final 16 seconds of this first half. It is officially third down and seven for the Scarlet Hawks from the 23-yard line. Lanzetta and the offense set to go. Here is the snap again under pressure. He's able to get the pass away to DeSantis who's still on his feet inside the five. He spins off a tackle and he is in for the touchdown. A 23-yard touchdown connection from Lanzetta to Jack DeSantis. And Milford is indeed able to maximize the damage here in the first half, up 27 to nothing with another point after coming up. What a great display from DeSantis. Lanzetta under heavy fire. He was able to just get the dump off pass away to DeSantis who managed to do the rest. A couple of spin moves, eluding tackles and eventually able to get into the end zone. And the point after tacked on by Sean Lahane and with just 6.5 seconds to go, it is 28 to nothing. Milford over Oliver Ames here on Milford TV. Just 6.5 seconds remain. Milford notching their fourth touchdown reception of this first half just moments ago. Lanzetta to DeSantis. 28 to nothing as Milford lines up for the kickoff. Lahane is ready. And here is the kick. It is a short kick. Fielded just outside the 40-yard line. It had the look of a potential onside kick, but that ball drifted a little bit too far. Milford figuring what do they have to lose with just 6.5 seconds to go, but the ball fielded by Oliver Ames at their own 39-yard line. So we'll see what the Tigers look to do here with just 4.5 seconds to go. Will they be bold here and try to get something done, or will they just take a knee? They are bunched up, so it looks like we will see the kneel down to end the first half. Oliver Ames not looking to take any chances. There is the kneel down by Ryan, and that will bring this first half to a close. Well, Milford longing to play a game here on their home field through the first three weeks of the season. They have certainly made up for lost time, scoring four touchdowns through the first half. 
A pair of touchdown receptions for Blake Hill, also touchdown receptions by Leo Maranta and Jack DeSantis. It all totals up to a 28 to nothing lead for the Scarlet Hawks over the Oliver Ames Tigers. As the teams are set to hit the locker rooms, we will break for halftime. We will return for second half action. Coming up next, you are watching coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics right here on Milford TV. Welcome back inside Milford High School, ladies and gentlemen. Continuing coverage of Scarlet Hawks football here on Milford TV. Once again, I am Tim Coet. It is a 28 to nothing lead for the Milford Scarlet Hawks over the visiting Oliver Ames Tigers. A great offensive day so far for the Scarlet Hawks. A total of 208 yards passing so far for this offense. Despite the rain, which has been fairly consistent throughout the game, it has lightened up to just a bit of a mist right now, but it has come down pretty hard through most of the game so far. But despite that, the passing game has been very effective, again, with those 208 yards passing. A little over 230 yards of all-purpose offense for the Scarlet Hawks. And, of course, four touchdowns, all passing touchdowns, two of them from Blake Hill and also touchdowns from Leo Maranta and Jack DeSantis scoring the final touchdown prior to halftime. And we also saw a big play on special teams, a blocked punt by Tony Mobilia that set Milford up inside the Oliver Ames 15. That ultimately led to their third scoring play of the game, but still... Milford cannot afford a letdown in the second half. Anything can happen. And the second half has been a bit tricky for the Scarlet Hawks over the course of this season so far. They have been outscored by their opponents in the second half through the first three weeks of the season by a tune of 44 to 23. So they will want to finish out this game strong. A big 28-point lead as the Scarlet Hawks get set to kick it away. The ball is in the air. This will take a bounce right around the 15-yard line. It's going to come to a stop prior to the goal line. And now Oliver Ames in all kinds of trouble as the return man is brought down at the 10-yard line. And Oliver Ames will be pinned back deep in their own territory as Liston Funai allowed that ball to skid past him. It did not bounce into the end zone for the touchback, forcing Liston to field it. And he is brought down by the Milford Special Teams unit at the 10-yard line. That is where Oliver Ames will begin their first possession of the second half. So far, all of the three possessions for Oliver Ames in the first half resulted in punts. They will go to the air on first down, looking for the quick dump off pass, but it is incomplete. Looking for number 11, Sean Cosgrove. Second down and 10. And this defensive line for Milford has made life difficult on Charlie Ryan so far tonight. It'll be second down and 10 as Oliver Ames huddles up. Of course, these two teams played to an exciting finish a year ago. It ended up being a one-point victory for Milford. Oliver Ames scoring a touchdown in the closing minutes. They could have kicked an extra point that would have tied the game. Instead, the coaching staff elected to go for two, and it ended up being a missed two-point conversion that allowed Milford to escape with the victory. Meanwhile, here, the completed pass up the middle. Looked like that was Cosgrove again, this time able to get the completion out towards the 20 yard line. The official line of scrimmage, the 19. So this sets up a third down and two. Charlie Ryan has shown mobility in the pocket so far in this game. We'll see if he keeps it himself to try to gain this first down yardage. Third and two from the 19 as Ryan operates out of the sh out of the shotgun, looking to pass. Looks across the middle and it's off the hands of number 44, Connor Maroney. Maroney was able to get a single hand on the ball but could not reel it in. The ball thrown a little bit off target and that will result in a fourth down and two and the punt team comes out once again, again. Oliver Ames cannot get anything going throughout the first half. They were only able to muster 41 yards of total offense and only able to grab a total of eight yards on this first drive. 
of the second half. The punt will come from inside the 10 yard line, a wobbler that hits at the 40, it takes a Milford bounce and is downed at around the 38. So Milford will start their first drive of the second half well inside Oliver Ames territory. And you can see Oliver Ames, a dejected team right now. The offense has just been at a premium all season long for the Tigers. They haven't been able to get anything going. And as Zach Lanzetta and the offense retake the field for the first time in the second half, conditions by comparison have improved here at field level. The rain has all but stopped, at least for now. And right on cue, it's a high snap that's bobbled by Lanzetta. He falls on it on the Milford 49-yard line. So how about that? Just as we say, conditions have improved. And Lanzetta bobbles the snap. And they will end up placing the ball down right at midfield. So that's a loss of about 11 yards for the Scarlet Hawks. And so the first break for Oliver Ames is that will push the Scarlet Hawks Again, back to the 50-yard line where it will be second down and 21. Lanzetta able to pull down the snap this time. He gets a quick dump off pass away. And Blake Hill is able to nearly break free. He's able to get the first down. He's finally dragged down just shy of the 30-yard line. And how about that? It looked like that play was going to be stopped for just a short gain, but Blake Hill again just able to keep the legs churning, and he is able to grab a chunk of yards. They'll rule him down back at the, looks to be the 32-yard line. So that will set up third down and four. Eight minutes and 46 seconds to go in this third quarter. Again, a high snap bobbled by Lanzetta. He's going to have to run with it himself. Still trying to push forward. He does not have the first down yardage. Now Milford continues to push the pile, and this is going to be close. So once again, the snaps have all been high so far in the second half. Lanzetta bobbles this one, pressure into the backfield. Lanzetta had no choice but to run with it himself. And it is going to set up fourth down. The ball on the 30. It will be fourth down and a short one. And the offense will stay on the field as Lanzetta will stay under center, expecting the quarterback keeper. Stopped up at first, but the second effort pushes Lanzetta into first down territory. A good initial stop by Oliver Ames, but Milford eventually able to force that pile ahead to get the first down and keep this drive going. And the clock continues to roll, which no one in the stadium will complain about, wanting to keep this second half moving at a good clip. First and 10 now from the 27. Back to Lanzetta's right, as again the snap is high, he's able to pull it down, and uh, now a swarm of Oliver Ames defenders is able to take Lanzetta down for the sack, all the way back at the 40 yard line. And so right now, quarterback and center having all kinds of trouble trying to communicate, and you can see Lanzetta now tossing up the hands as he goes over to Coach Todd. So Milford doing such a good job with ball control in the first half despite at times torrential rain. Now with just a very light mist on the field, they have started to see the ball just sliding awkwardly out of the hands of the center. Tough snaps all the way around. So now second down and 22 as again Lanzetta has to jump for it. He's able to get the completion out to Mobilia. Tony Mobilia, the junior, with the reception. Mobilia. 
Clock down to six minutes and 14 seconds to go as the ball will be spotted on the 37-yard line. It will be third down and a very long way to go for the Scarlet Hawks. Third down and 21 as the Hawks offense huddle up. Not a single snap so far on this drive has been clean. Lanzetta in the shotgun now looks to coach Todd. Looks like they will change the play. And now here's the snap. Play action, now the throw up the middle and a diving grab made by Maranta. That ball came in a little bit underthrown. Maranta had to hold up. He went into the feet first slide to be able to make the catch. And that is good for a Scarlet Hawks first down. Maranta, very good concentration and athleticism to reel in that ball. If Lanzetta had been able to hit him in stride, that would have likely been a touchdown, but still it gets the first down. It keeps the drive going. First and 10 from the Oliver Ames 15 now as they will hurry it up. The give is to Blake Hill up the middle and he's able to get to the 10. More positive yards on the ground for the junior Blake Hill. As Maranta heads to the sideline after that last play. The clock still rolling now down to about four and a half minutes to go. This is Milford's first drive of the second half. Second and five, a bobbled snap again, and Lanzetta is going to take his second sack of the drive. Not as big a loss this time around, but you can really see the frustration starting to show through for Lanzetta. It'll be third down coming up now for the Hawks. It'll be third down and nine after the four yard loss on the sack. Three thirty six to play, third down and nine. And they whistle the play dead as a flag comes out. And this will be a false start penalty against the Scarlet Hawks. And that will push them back a little bit further. We saw the penalties mount a bit for the Scarlet Hawks towards the end of the first half. And now a penalty here will send it from a third down and nine to a third down and 15. We saw a big third down completion just moments ago to Leo Maranta. From the shotgun, a good snap here, a flag down, a free play for the Scarlet Hawks as Lanzetta looks for Capaletti, and it is complete into the end zone for the touchdown. We will see what the penalty flag is. And it is going to go against Milford, so a 15-yard touchdown completion to Jack Capaletti gets wiped off the boards. And again, you've just seen the array of passing targets that Lanzetta has at his disposal. It's really become an embarrassment of riches. Not only do you have Blake Hill who can make plays really in all aspects of this offense, but you also have the senior captain, Leo Maranta. You have Tony Mobilia. You also have Jack Capaletti, who's made some very nice catches through these first four weeks of the season. And Jack DeSantis, who can also catch the ball out of the backfield. So really one of the most dangerous passing offenses in the Hockamock League. They face a third down and 20 as Lanzetta pulls down the snap. He dumps the pass off to DeSantis who was able to get inside the 20 yard line, but nowhere close to the first down yardage. 
So it'll end up setting up a fourth down and about 11 yards to go. This drive for the Scarlet Hawks has eaten up the overwhelming majority of this third quarter. We're all the way down to two minutes to go as they will bring the field goal unit out. Sean Lahane a chance to tack on to the Scarlet Hawks lead. Here's the hold and the kick is going to be wide to the left. No good on the attempt for Sean Lahane who misses his second consecutive field goal attempt. We saw him miss about a 25 yard field goal chance in overtime last week against Canton. And now misses the field goal try here so the one positive from Milford on that drive is the amount of time that they took off the clock, but unfortunately, the drive results in no points. So a minute 50 to go in the third quarter. Oliver Ames will take over. We'll be right back next here on Milford TV. Right back to action now as Ryan looks to throw on first down and airmails the receiver on the far sidelines as Steven Skurdy was the intended target on the far sidelines, but the ball lands incomplete. Over eight minutes on that last drive for the Scarlet Hawks. Second down and 10 coming up for Oliver Ames, taking a long time here now. And so now a late, a late flag came down on that last play, a pass interference call that sets up first down and 10 from the 25. Dropping back to pass is Ryan, the throw nearly picked off and the throw incomplete. So Jake Roberto nearly reeling in that pass as it came in low. It also was nearly deflected by one of the defensive backs for the Scarlet Hawks. It looked like it might have been Nesta. So this sets up second down and 10 now for Oliver Ames. As they will look to go heavy on the passing game as they try and get something going into the later stages of this game. A minute 39 to go in the third quarter as again Ryan drops back. The throw over off the hands, I should say, of the receiver, Roberto, and nearly picked off as the ball was deflected. Third down and 10 now as the Scarlet Hawks have had a couple of chances at turnovers on these throws here from Charlie Ryan. From the shotgun now, Ryan drops back under pressure, the quick throw and it is incomplete, looking again for Nick Zioli. And it will be fourth down and 10. So the only yards gained on this drive for Oliver Reams came courtesy of the pass interference penalty. And once again, we will see a punt out of the Tigers. Every single drive has ended in a punt so far tonight for Oliver Ames. The punter set up at the 10. Here's the snap. And the kick is away, a high short kick. It is going to take a bounce just prior to midfield, but it takes a nice favorable roll for the Tigers just outside the 40 yard line. They'll spot the ball right in between the 39 and the 40 of the Scarlet Hawks. And so this Oliver Reams defense that was out there for eight and a half minutes straight just a minute or two of a breather and now right back out on the field trying to hold down this Milford offense. They were able to force the Hawks into a field goal try on that last drive, a field goal that was missed by Lahane. 
And so here comes Milford's offense again with a minute 17 to go in the third. Lanzetta with a back on each side. Here is the snap. They hand it off to DeSantis. DeSantis trying to find some space on the far side. He is not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And so just barely able to get back to the line. A bit generous. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 as we are under a minute to play. The Hawks in no particular hurry as now they are back to the line of scrimmage. A back to Lanzetta's left. He takes the snap, looking to throw, has some time, looking towards the far sidelines, and the pass is completed. And the run after, all the way out towards the 39-yard line. That looked like it was nearly picked off, but somehow Milford is able to reel it in as Blake Hill is able to make the catch. So Blake Hill able to just pull that ball away from the defender who read the play, came streaking up to try to make the pick, but Lanzetta another reception and takes it down to the Olive Rames 42 and will we see one final play? Five seconds to go indeed as Lanzetta takes the snap, hands it off to DeSantis who is wrapped up but is able to spill his way forward just across the line of scrimmage as time expires in the third quarter. And so no points in that third quarter for either side, but Milford maintains a sizable 28 to nothing lead over Oliver Ames. We will step aside ever so briefly and have the start of the fourth quarter for you when we come back next. 28 to nothing. Milford leads it over Oliver Ames as you enjoy coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics right here on Milford TV. Hey! Back for the start of the fourth quarter, you can see the Milford jerseys in the stands as it is youth football night here at Milford High School and a lot of the kids out here enjoying the game. We saw the Mighty Mites players out there playing at halftime and there are some of the kids. They don't care that it's raining. They don't care that it's cold. All they care about is their team, the Scarlet Hawks, have a 28 to nothing lead with just 11 minutes to play. As Milford now will move from right to left across your television screens as Lanzetta goes deep for Blake Hill. He makes the catch and drags the defender towards the goal line. He will come up just shy of the touchdown, about 39 yards on that reception for Blake Hill. Tried to drag the defender right into the end zone, but came up just shy. And it will be first and goal from the one yard line. Lanzetta looking for the home run play to the tight end, Blake Hill. And again, you can just see the raw power out of Blake Hill, who's able to make the catch. The defender clutching onto the jersey for dear life, and it almost has no effect. So first and goal from the one. Hill now in the backfield to Lanzetta's left. And he gets the carry, muscling his way forward. Does he make his way in, waiting for the call? And so this will be shy of the end zone. So there, the, Hawk, the Tigers defense able to make the stop on Hill with just the yard to go. That'll bring up second and goal. And the Scarlet Hawks huddle it up before they retake the line of scrimmage looking for their fifth touchdown of the night. They've all been receiving touchdowns so far. Again, the give goes to Blake Hill, and this time he is in the one-yard touchdown rush for Blake Hill, his third score of the game. And the Scarlet Hawks take the 34 to nothing lead with the point after coming up. Nine minutes and 44 seconds to go in this game. 
as the point after goes up and it is good from Sean Lahane, 35 to nothing. The Scarlet Hawks with a new season high, four points scored in a single game so far on the season. They already came into this game as one of the highest powered offenses in the Hockamock League, 64 total points scored coming into this game which was second in the Davenport division behind only the Foxborough Warriors. And so you can tack on an additional 35 points to that mark put up tonight for this offense, showing no problems with these inclement weather conditions. And so again, just a one-point victory for Milford against Oliver Ames a season ago as there is the man who has made things happen tonight in all phases of the game. Blake Hill, two receiving touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, an unbelievable effort from the junior. One of the most feared offensive players in the entire league, maybe even the entire state. You just cannot stop him. You can only hope to slow him down. as the Scarlet Hawks line up to kick this ball away with 9.44 to play in the game. The kick away from Lahane, it takes a bounce at the 20. This will roll back inside the five yard line where it will be brought out and some space now for Oliver Ames and finally brought down. So making something out of nothing, it was Noah Fitzgerald So that ball rolling all the way back inside the five yard line and Fitzgerald able to bring it out as far as the 30, out to the 31. So avoiding being pinned back deep in their own territory once again, this is just the second possession for Oliver Ames in the second half. The third possession I should say, but they have had not much success to show for the second half or the game in general. They are able to get that pass completed out past the 35 yard line out towards the 38. So it'll be a second down coming up now. Second down and three as Oliver Ames now hustles up back to the line. Quarterback gets the pass away again to the far sideline, and it does look like that will move the chains. Yes, indeed. The clock stopped right now with 8.52 to go, so this is the first, first down Oliver Ames has had without the assistance of a penalty in this half. Looking back to throw, the going deep down the far sideline, but that is well overthrown. We should point out it is a new quarterback under center, under center here late in the fourth quarter, Kyle Gagliardi. Eight minutes and 24 seconds to go after that incomplete pass, second down and 10. Gagliardi, this time fakes the handoff. He's going to run with it out towards midfield. He has the first down and out of bounds right at the Milford 40. So right now this offense showing some signs of life under the new quarterback. So a first down now into Milford territory, a place where Oliver Ames has not spent a whole lot of time. So 
So on first down, Gagliardi looking to throw, looking for number 81, Nick Zioli, but that is incomplete. But interesting to see how this Oliver Ames offense is operating with the backup quarterback out there, Gagliardi looking very comfortable both with his arm and with his legs. We saw that big first down rush. Eight oh nine to play as again they fake the handoff. Gagliardi's gonna run with it close to the first down. Wrapped up by William Pointer for the Scarlet Hawks. And this will set up third down and short. So we'll see what Gagliardi is able to do here on third and short. Will he run with it himself? From the shotgun, Gagliardi takes the snap. He fakes the handoff. He will run with it himself. He has the first down. And now crosses the 25 yard line. So that's all the way down to the 24 yard line for Kyle Gagliardi. So the backup quarterback getting this offense going like they haven't been able to do all game deep inside Milford territory. A timeout with seven minutes and 17 seconds to go. A first down coming up for the Tigers when we come back next here on Milford TV. 7-17 to play in this fourth quarter. The backup quarterback for Oliver Ames, Kyle Gagliardi, has this Tigers offense on the move, looking to pass on first down from the Milford 24, and it is incomplete. That will stop the clock with 7-13 left to go, so this fourth quarter slowing down in its pace after the clock ran fairly consistently through that third quarter. So second down and 10 now. By far the best looking drive of the day for the visitors. Gagliardi out of the shotgun. And the QB looking for the end zone and that one incomplete. So a near interception for the Hawks. It was Pointer, in fact. So this Hawks defense starting to, having to exert some energy here, forcing a lot of three and outs through most of this game, but they've had to dig a little deeper here on this drive. They have forced Oliver Ames into the third and 10 from the 24. Kyle Gagliardi out of the shotgun. He takes the snap. He pump fakes, now in trouble. A flag down as Gagliardi throws it, and it is intercepted. Another flag down as Milford's finally dragged down. It looked like Bl Harrison Bliss who was able to make the interception, but flags down on the field. Gagliardi, it was Oliver Ames committing the penalty. The penalty declined, the result in the play, the interception for Harrison Bliss that will stand. So frustration in a big way for Oliver Ames. They saw Kyle Gagliardi come out for that last drive. It was a good looking drive all the way down towards the Milford 20, but it ends with the interception. It's the First turnover of the game. So Harrison Bliss with the interception. 
So with 6.56 to go, the Scarlet Hawks take over from their own 25. And Lanzetta will hand it off on first down. The run straight up the middle for DeSantis. He gets as far as the line of scrimmage, and that's it. And they give him about a half yard gained. So second down and about 10 to go as the clock winds down once again. And the fans staying in this one right until the final seconds have come down as this will stay on the ground again. It's Feaster with the carry and he is able to get the first down, dragged down at the 38. Chappelle Feaster. So giving Feaster a chance to get some carries now here in the second half. We saw him featured a bit early in the game. As the marching band without the instruments still getting the crowd going. First and 10, just over five and a half minutes to play. Lanzetta gets the play from the sidelines, tries to keep the hands warm. Takes the snap, hands it off again to Feaster, tries to turn the corner on the near side. Gets to about the 40 yard line. Clock continuing to roll as they try to keep the football dry out there on the field. Again, the conditions have been slightly better here in the second half, but really it has been a rainy, cold day all the way around. A day that started actually with the girls' soccer team out here on the field taking on Stoughton. It ended up being a 2 to nothing victory for the Lady Hawks. And now the football team looking for a victory here in their home opener of 2015, just minutes away from securing... What is sure to be a big victory, a 35 to nothing lead right now. With four and a half minutes to play, again they hand it off to Feaster. This time he heads to the far side. He is able to turn the corner. He has the first down all the way inside Tigers territory. Forced out at the Oliver Ames 45 yard line. So Chappelle Feaster keeping this good offensive night going for the Hawks. And this Oliver Ames defense has to be just about worn out by now. Here's the handoff, the give again is to Feaster, nearly dragged down, but he's able to stay on his feet Still up and he is free and he is down the near sideline and in for the touchdown. A 45 yard touchdown run for the freshman Chappelle Feaster. And what a way to accentuate a great offensive night for Milford as the freshman takes it in. Penalty flag down, it goes against Oliver Ames, declined, and the result of the play, another touchdown for the Scarlet Hawks. And we should point out, it was Matt Curran, the backup quarterback in there, handing that ball off to Feaster, so a lot of the second unit players getting a chance to play here late for Milford. As the kick is up and the extra point is good, four minutes and 10 seconds to go in this game, 42 points for the Scarlet Hawks. They lead the Oliver Ames Tigers. The good times are rolling here in Milford. Coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics on Milford TV. It has been some kind of day here in the home opener for the Scarlet Hawks. 42 points. The most recent points coming courtesy of the freshman 
Chappelle Feaster, a 45-yard touchdown run as the kick is away. And trying to break free is number 24, Noah Fitzgerald. He's able to get a decent return out past the 40-yard line. The clock stopped with an even four minutes to go, so still time left on the clock for Oliver Ames as the outcome all but decided. And it looks like it will be Kyle Gagliardi back out there for his second offensive series. He hands it off on first down. Now looks to give the running back a couple of blocks out in front. And so a good gain. And again, you really have to give credit to Gagliardi who came out on that last series for Oliver Ames, got this offense going. And unfortunately that, unfortunately for Oliver Ames, that drive ending in the interception but Gagliardi getting this team on the move again. First and 10 from the Milford 43. The handoff goes to Aiden Conley. He's able to bring it down to the 35, setting up second down and short. And the clock is still running. And you have to imagine the Scarlet Hawks defense wants to keep this shutout intact. They don't want to allow a garbage time touchdown here. And for Oliver Ames, meanwhile, already suffering a shutout loss back during week one. They want to try to avoid that if at all possible. Keeping it himself is Gagliardi. He's able to get the first down across the 25 yard line. Clock continuing to tick down, down to the final two minutes and 30 seconds of this game. First and 10 for Oliver Ames from the Milford 23. Gagliardi has been elusive for this Milford defense when he keeps the ball in his own hands. And this play whistled dead. Forty-two to nothing. Certainly a great win for the Scarlet Hawks to build on as they are just over two minutes away from climbing right back up to the 500 mark. But meanwhile, a timeout taken on the field. The final moments of this game will unfold when we come back next. Once again, you are watching coverage of Milford High School Athletics right here on Milford TV. It's not only the football team braving the elements out there tonight, the cheerleaders doing an excellent job as well, keeping this Milford fan base engaged from start to finish as back to action here, the pass is completed to Jake Roberto. As Oliver Ames continues to look for the bid to break up the shutout. Under two minutes to play. It'll be second down and short. The ball spotted at the Milford 15. Gagliardi takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking to run with it himself, looking for the end zone, and he is tripped up just shy. Saving the touchdown, at least temporarily, Joey DeMarco. And DeMarco hobbled a bit as he came away from that play, just able to trip up Gagliardi, preventing the score. But it will be first and goal now for Oliver Ames from the four-yard line. So it looks as though Oliver Ames is on the verge of spoiling this Scarlet Hawks shutout. Here is the handoff, forcing his way towards the goal line and in for the touchdown. Points on the scoreboard for Oliver Ames. 
So 42 to six now with the point after coming up. Fifty-five point seven seconds to go as Oliver Ames lines up for the point after, and there is Malcolm Zale. He has been down at field level throughout all of these rainy conditions, bringing you excellent up-close and personal shots as Oliver Ames will instead go for the two-point conversion. Gagliardi keeps it himself. He's able to bring it in, so they go for two. They're able to get it. So it will be 42 to eight now in favor of the Scarlet Hawks. And so Milford will get the ball back one final time when we come back after this commercial break. Stay tuned to coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics here on Milford TV. Milford TV excited to bring you coverage of Scarlet Hawks football on Milford TV. And there is Joey Marcello set up on top of the press box here at the Milford High School football field. Joey Marcello and Malcolm Zale, our cameramen for the game today, doing an absolutely phenomenal job. Rob O'Keefe, our technical director, and Tim Coet here on the broadcast. We've had it easy here in the press box, but it's been the cameramen who have been doing the tough work through these elements tonight. So a great job by those two, a great job by the Scarlet Hawks who will now receive this kickoff inside the 10 yard line, motoring it back straight up the middle across the 20 yard line to about the 23. And it was Chappelle Feaster fresh off his touchdown rush 45-yard touchdown rush, so Milford's offense will come back out on the field with 48.2 seconds to go. We did see Curran, the backup, Matt Curran, the sophomore backup quarterback, out on the last series. We'll see if he comes out here again to finish out these final 48 seconds. As the Oliver Ames defense already out there, both of these teams cold and wet and ready to head back in and two very different finishes for these two teams 42 points for Milford getting their season back on track here tonight but Oliver Ames continues to look for answers and prior to the snap a flag comes in so these final seconds getting dragged out just a bit here in Milford as the false start goes against the Scarlet Hawks, so they will get pushed back five yards. First and 15 now from just inside the 20. Current an opportunity to get a little bit of experience here late in this game. He takes the snap, hands it off to Feaster. Feaster has some room on the far side, crosses the 25, dragged down at about the 27, 28 yard line. As the clock continues to roll, we'll see if that is the last play of the night. Second down and seven. As Milford gets some fresh personnel out on the field, just 18 seconds to go. And Milford bleeding out the final seconds of this clock, poised on the sidelines, ready to rush out and celebrate. Now just seven seconds left. And everybody getting loud here in Milford as the final second drifts off the clock. And that is the ball game. What a terrific effort for the Scarlet Hawks as they head out onto the field to celebrate a 42 to eight victory over Oliver Ames. They're able to come through with a victory here on their home opener. A long anticipated home opener after three very tough games on the road, which included losses in the final moments of their previous two games, but they're able to make that a distant memory as the offense was flat out dominant from start to finish here tonight. As again, they defeat Oliver Ames by a final score of 42 to eight. So Milford gets back up to 500, now two and two on the season. And Oliver Ames, the struggles continue. They are now 0 and four on the year. 
And for Milford, they will need to quickly get back to work as they face a very tough test coming up next week. They will face the unbeaten Foxborough Warriors right back here on their home field, Foxborough. In a battle of unbeatens tonight, Foxborough taking on Canton. Foxborough was able to come away with the victory. So a perfect 4-0 for the Foxborough Warriors as they will head into Milford just a week from tonight. We will be right back with the coverage here on Milford TV, so you will want to check out the Milford TV educational channel to find all of our Scarlet Hawks athletic broadcasts. Again, we want to send out a sincere thank you to all of our hardworking crew on this game here tonight, our cameramen, Joey Marcello and Malcolm Zale, our technical director, Rob O'Keefe, and I am Tim Coet. Your final score, one final time tonight, 42 to eight. The Scarlet Hawks blow out the Oliver Ames Tigers. This has been a presentation of Milford High School Athletics here on Milford TV. So long, everybody.